a couple of focus characters for each book. So maybe it's not the same one for every book, but you get to, those focus characters will witness what the other characters are doing. So you still get to see what everyone's doing, rather than have it spread out with too many points of view. Um, and then there's the water hazard of taking way too long because the books are gigantic. And that one I, I've kind of fallen into. Um, <laughs> so this book is maybe a little bit late. Um, and you can see, I'm sure my editor is laughing at me right now. Uh, anyway, um, so in this uh, scene, I'm just going to read a, a quick little uh, fight scene because it's awesome. Um, in this scene, Arlen, uh, who, uh, not to give away a major spoiler, is the warded man, uh, is uh, traveling with um, Renna Tanner, who is a childhood friend of his. And the two of them have entered into a village that uh, has been completely destroyed by demons. So the village is still standing, but everyone there has been killed by demons. Um, like the wards failed, demons got in, and that was it for everyone. And so they're sitting there kind of angrily, and they want, they're waiting for the sun to set so they can avenge the, the people in the village. Um, and this village was famous for making poteen, which is a very strong uh, form of alcohol. Uh, and so they're getting drunk while it's happening. Um, so uh, Arlen uh, it starts out with Arlen, Arlen talking. They have a drink in Croatia called Kuzi that the Sharam sometimes drink before going into battle at night. They say it gives a warrior courage. He held up a cup to her with a smirk. I found poteen to have a similar effect. Thought you said Sharam embraced their fear, Rana said, sitting down to mirror him with the jug in between. Most do, and there ain't no better way, Arlen said. But embracing leaves a body cold. When I'm in a place like Sweetwell, I don't want to be cold. I want to be mad as the core itself. Rena nodded. That was something she could understand. She ignored the tiny cups, sticking her finger through the jug handle. She braced the container on her arm and brought it to her lips with a practiced smoothness, taking a long pull. The poteen was as strong as Arlen warned, and she coughed a bit, but it was sweeter than her father's brew and the ball of fire that stuck, struck her belly soon calmed and spread warmth throughout her limbs. Arlen dropped the cups, taking the jug and pulling as she had. They passed back and forth until the light failed completely, and the telltale mist began to rise, heralding the corlings. The mist began to coalesce into field demons, sleek and low to the ground, prowling on all fours like lions, faster than anything alive. A few wood demons gathered, appeared as well, the larger demons taking longer to form. Renna got to her feet, swaying unsteadily for a moment before she regained her equilibrium. She moved toward a coalescing wood demon, carrying the much-lightened jug loosely in one finger. She glared at the demon as she waited for it to materialize, thinking of the night she had spent locked in her farm's outhouse, screaming as the demons rattled at the door. She thought of the empty buildings and the poisoned well behind her. She took one last pull of poteen and stoppered the jug. With her free hand, she reached into the pouch at her waist. At last, the demon solidified, opening its mouth to roar at her. The orifice was great enough to swallow her entire head with row upon row of pointed teeth. But before it could let out a sound, Renna flicked her hand at it, tossing an acorn into the gaping maw. The heat ward she had painted on the acorn activated when it made contact with the demon's tongue, exploding the nut with a flash and a bang. And at that very moment, Renna spit poteen in the demon's face. She pivoted out of the way as its head exploded in flames. The demon fell to the ground, thrashing as its bark-like armor burned. There was a laugh, and, Arlen tur and Renna turned to see Arlen clapping his hands at her. Nice work, but I'll do you one better. Renna smirked, crossed her arms, and stepped over to the safety of a ward post. I'd like to see you try, Arlen Bales. Arlen bowed. The field demon turned solid a few feet away from him, bigger than a night wolf. It growled and tamped down, ready to pounce. Arlen crossed his arms, the same as Renna, standing his ground. His hood was down. He almost never put it up anymore. But he still wore the, desk, the rest of his day robes, covering the powerful wards tattooed all over his body. Field demons were fast as the wind, and without protection of his wards, it seemed the demon would knock him down and savage him. Renna's hand dropped to her knife, and she gripped it tightly. But the field demon passed through Arlen as if it was made of smoke. His body swirled where the creature passed through it, returning after a moment to sharp clarity. Arlen took a brief bow as the demon recovered. Nothing can touch me in the night now, Ren. Not if I see it coming. The field demon pivoted with a roar and came back at him. Renna expected it to pass through him again, but this time Arlen flowed around the attack, the attack faster than her eye could see, wrapping an arm around the corling's neck and sharply arresting its momentum. He quick-stepped quick around the demon's back to avoid the flailing, flailing claws, maintaining the headlock with one arm. 
He reached his free hand around to draw a heat ward on the demon's chest with his bare finger. The line he traced came alive with fire as he completed the symbol, and as he let go his hold and backed away, the demon was consumed in flames.